from my perspective on surveys, there's two ways you do it. There's the, either you're researching your market or you're segmenting your market. The language in my world is you're asking an open-ended question. So you're not giving anybody multiple choice and making them choose which one because you don't know what to give them as choices yet. So you're asking them a question and letting them write in their own words, in their own copy, what's going on with them. So you could understand them, like you said, right? Yep. And then that's how we end up going and building these segments afterwards. Once you figure that out, that's when you build a segmentation survey funnel so that you mm -hmm. can identify which one they, they belong in. Let's, let's just talk. You're Dave. When you're you, you're awesome and you're going to like drop gold. So talk to me. Really? Un this is what I want to talk about. Yeah. Really understanding a day in the life of your avatar. Okay. Um, because uh, actually, because when I, when we talk about like when, whenever people was taught to me, like avatar research, just yeah. the word avatar. And I don't even like to forget like you're like um, my uh, actually our mutual friend, uh, Julie talks, she calls it your human. You know, right. just just changing the word from human to avatar, right? Totally, it it just changes things. So, um, when and admittedly, it's funny because as you know, like I started out in ecom, and I literally like I understood the avatar thing at some level. Like, obviously, if I'm selling kombucha kits, I want to sell it to people who want to buy a kombucha kit, but I never did the the real deep research because the fun place for me to play is the marketing. Um, of of it, which is funny because the avatar research is the foundation of the marketing, but it's like the boring classes. Sometimes you have to take in college to get to the real fun classes. Yeah. Um, and so um, through the last couple of years of being able to coach like now hundreds of freaking people's businesses from like physical products to uh, digital to services to every niche you name of, of being in, in um, um, uh, the applaudable coach and with for uh, Russell's uh, two CCX. I've gotten a, a a greater respect and appreciation for real avatar, uh, and I even hate that. Like really understanding, and so um, a combination of my love for the Beatles and getting my my four and a half year old uh, into Beatles. Um, <laughs> as I was writing copy for um, this client who's in the fertility space, which by the way, like understanding your human there or your you know your avatar, your audience. You need to be so mindful and sensitive doing research for that audience. Um, one of my businesses is Sensory Scout, uh, which we, you know, we provide uh, physical products to parents who have kids on the spectrum. And so that market is also a pretty sensitive, but you cannot get more, you know, for me, writing, uh, really understanding to serve a, a woman who has um, possibly had something I learned, you know, possibly having miscarriages. So the goal, understanding that the goal isn't to be pregnant, it is to have a baby. And then what we found out later on, it's actually to be a mom, to actually, right. to actually, uh, uh, and, but the word mom is, could be very triggering because we all have our own moms and our own uh, <laughs> uh, wow. craziness associated to that and love and respect and confusion, all that stuff. So, so this type of thing, but, um, but actually taking the time. And so there is the, the, the research part and then there's the empathy part as like when you're writing copy, um, really putting on that hat. And so I call it the day in the life. Okay. So I could share with you some, some, some things that everybody could do. So, um, in the Amazon world, right? If I'm selling physical products in my physical products brands, and now I'm going golden shower, buddy, because I'm going to talk a mile a minute. Because uh, now, I, you know, this is no, but it's it's stuff. really good. It's funny. Cool. You're like you're overlapping with what what I do, where you just said it, right? All you got to do is like you can't relate to a woman who's trying to get pregnant and then actually have a child, right? But if you're in the marketing game of that, then you got to think, okay, how do I get into that person's mind? And then people sit there and they start thinking, well, what would a woman think? Hmm. It's like, you just stop, just ask them, ask your, your best client, the, the customer who you're working with, what's going on. You said the why, right? Like what's yep. your issue? What do you, how are you feeling? And that helps you with one understanding your segments. And two, it helps you with how they speak in the market so that you can write your copy. Exactly. Absolutely. Yep. And, and the, uh, the cool thing is, is like, you know, if you don't have a list or a community yet, you know, doing things like surveys and quizzes and stuff like that is boom, right out of the gate. Yeah, totally. uh, but the, the, so the craziest thing is when I'm, you know, when I'm doing coaching, stuff like that, people who do have a list, they don't even think to, to just go directly to their current list. Right. They have buyers and they're right. It's like, it's like we have no problem selling. And it's almost in some from psychologically possibly it's like, it's like we have this disconnection online 
But if you literally just break that, 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 you know, that, that the fourth wall and just ask your customers, ask. And so this client um, has a Facebook group of like 10,000 women, has a email list of 60,000 people. Yeah. And um, as you said, we, 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 we twisted it a little bit. So usually we, um, when, we, when you do a pressure launch or something, we teach, uh, you know, what's your number one question, right? What's the number one question for you getting the result? You know, blah, blah. And, uh, and then you can compile it and that's great insight. And then you could also use that for leverage then answer those questions in a live and then maybe, you know, offer, make an offer. But instead, as you said, we, we asked them, what's their why? Yeah. And it changes where their brain is because especially w- women um, who are trying to become fertile and, and, and carry a baby to, to term, what we found was it's not like, it, in other words, they've already been trying to, they're already in this cycle and their yeah. focus sometimes you forget, and which is the interesting thing because that was my correlation when I did like this research. I looked at all these messages in the groups and looked at uh, different products and, and Amazon reviews. The, um, the the through line was entrepreneurs, and I know it's crazy. Like it's like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, but like why do entrepreneurs stop? Because we get so you know we get so caught up in the day to day mechanisms and getting the thing, we forget about why we wanted the thing in the in the first place. And I know it sounds yeah. crazy because life and children, but when you get to that point when you are you know ten years trying to have a child and you've had miscarriages and 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 put so much time and money into this, you get so focused on the mechanism. And the thing, and it becomes like a lot, like a like a very mechanic, just like a lot of small business owners that start out and they forget the whole reason why they wanted to start in the first place. So that's that's the first thing. Any any uh, thoughts on on that? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I think what you just said earlier, how you have a group of ten thousand people, right? That's the research side of the business. That's where, from my perspective, on surveys. There's two ways you do it. There's the, either you're researching your market or you're segmenting your market. If you don't know your segments, you got to research. So by doing that, what you're saying, the way the language in my world is, you're asking an open-ended question. So you're not giving anybody multiple choice and making them choose which one because you don't know what to give them as choices yet. So you're asking them a question and letting them write in their own words, in their own copy, what's going on with them so you could understand them, like you said. Right. Yep. And then that's how we end up going and building these segments afterwards. Once you figure that out, that's when you build a segmentation survey funnel so that you mm-hmm. can identify which one they, they belong in. And then you customize the messaging to a point where what you said a word earlier is you show them you understand them, you empathize and relate with them that you understand what they're going through. And that allows you then to transition into whatever it is your solution is because they're going to yep. think that you're designing it specifically for them. And that's where you're creating like perception. Right. Mm -hmm. You you sell the same offer to four different people, but you're focused on what's your issue. Right. And then you have four main things. So it's cool. But and and the and just to kind Mm -hmm. of baby bridge that (laughs) I never used that word before, but now it's a thing, Eric, a baby bridge is, you know, if you are uh, mainly in in a business, let's say that, that, that that you're an expert on and you, and you teach and you know, like uh, where it's maybe lead generation um, and then affiliating to lots of different and segmenting and then making specific offers versus a um, someone like herself, where she's just focused on this one offer for her then the change is uh, could be just just in the messaging, right? Same offer, just messaging. And if you want to baby bridge that, before you could before segmenting, there's still a huge leverage win that you could do very quickly, and that is just take all four buckets and put them in your sales copy. Whereas before you didn't even have anything; you were just throwing things yep. against the mud. I'll give you like a couple of you know like like um, anyway, just to go. And so that's what we did. We asked that. I wanted to be mindful of uh, of that, but there were takeaways on here that we don't have anywhere even in our copy. We have a long form copy. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, just making your headline, having the three benefits instead of your one benefit is a, is a baby bridge. Once you see that working, then maybe uh, more specific, a uh, very specific email subject headline even, right? There's 100%. ways to ba- baby bridge Dude. those things, which I love about you because we can talk about this that, and geek out and most oh people God, would be over the heads, but yes. I mean, exactly what you're saying is there's certain language that different audience and speak. Like if, if you, if you're in the funnel hacking world, right? Like with, with Russell and you talk about a funnel, everybody knows what that means. But then you go to, to Thanksgiving and you're talking about a funnel and your mom and dad are like, huh? A, like a, like a, like a funnel, like, you know, or you go to college and they're thinking funnel, like, oh, you're going to beer funnel, right? It's like, 
the language of that audience that you're talking to, you understand from that copy. So now you're able to speak in that slang and then it's a it's a powerful thing to be able to write copy. There's no doubt. That's awesome. Really cool. Yeah. Um, the last uh, last tip then is how do you um, bridge that? So now you have this you have this research, you have this data, um, and and a lot of times like you know, are you are you left handed or right handed? It's that's a funny question. I play sports <laughs> lefty, and I do everything else righty. Believe Dude, it hilarious. I, I, I play sports right and I do everything else lefty. And yeah. so my gut, my, well, my gut was that, you know, you have a, you also have a combination of an analytical brain and a creative brain. Um, and so for many of us, so it's sometimes hard to jump, you know, back and forth in those, in those zones. And so the a nice little exercise is taking this research and then how do you then make that into a, a story? And the, this, this idea of a day in the life where um, I've actually used it, copy and pasted it right into my copy because it's calling out your avatar. It's aligning to their pains, their desires, because you're literally saying, and this is, this is the, the template, the framework, if you will, does this story sound familiar? And I call it a day in the life, but it's really any time lapse. So for instance, um, in, in this niche, fertility, it's like zero to six months. The, head, the headline was, we'll just see what happens. Like, we're not really trying to have a baby, but we'll just see what happens. And by the way, you're is smiling. It changed it, right? I totally you're smiling because I'm smiling too. Those are the actual words people say to their spouse when they hear their friend just had a baby and then you look at each other like, should we have a baby? Well, well let's just see what happens. You know, let's start having, you know what I mean? So we're yeah. using the exact words that people are saying and then you just paint that. What happens zero, six months? And then we, we said uh, six months to, to a year hmm, you know, maybe, um, you know, I, I, I got off birth control. I went to see the, uh, the gynecologist and, or you went, sorry, you, it's all you. So it's like, does this story sound familiar? And yeah. to, to soften it, I used even just a little bit. In other words, time-lapsing it, you have so many at-bats to, for this person to connect with, even if they're not connecting with everyone. You know, you don't, uh, all, and then all of a sudden, you know, year two, you know, Maybe you know you and your spouse are um, you know are just maybe you're the couple that doesn't have kids in your social group. Maybe you're thinking about adoption. How can we actually afford this? Um, and what you're doing is you're time lapsing. So for for myself, and yeah, buddy, I know you'd love this, dude. And, I could totally and, help you with like just breaking that down. You need to do it into segments. You're like you're like on the 15 yard line, and I could give you the next 15 yards to get into the end zone for your outcome pages which is the mm. results afterwards that you're going to then hit on exactly what they're talking about. You're not going to have your four things. Those are your four segments, right? You have your four things and now you're going to focus on the people that are adopting versus the person that. Oh, for, for sure. I, where, where, um, I where, where the, the, the dance is, is how detailed do you get? Is it the chicken or the egg? Do you scale and then get detailed? Do you get detailed and then scale? Because it's just where, where to put the, the leverage of, of resources. If, but the, but this idea of time lapsing, um, obviously if you are, are, um, have trouble sleeping at night, so then the time lapse is, you know, in a day you wake up, you know, groggy, feeling like crap, saying that tonight will be the night you're going to go to bed early. Then at 12 right. o'clock, you're on your fifth cup of coffee. You keep peeing during, then at two o'clock, you just, and it's such a great exercise to really understand your avatar. And totally. it becomes so good that you can just copy and paste it and put it in your sales copy. Uh, totally. So when you're building this avatar, you're asking them questions, right? You're one question about why, right? You get all these answers. So what do you do with that data now to now build your avatar to a place where you understand them. So one, you can obviously talk to them through your copy, but two, which is really important, we all know this, right? All us marketers is that that's how you're gonna buy your traffic. That's how you're gonna create your targeting. So how do you do that? Do you name your avatars? I know a lot of people like to name mm. the male, the female, whoever it is, right? Like, is this Joanne? And you're thinking of Joanne, you know, like, but if Joanne is your only avatar, but you have four segments, Joanne can't be all four of those avatars, right? So yep. it's like, how do you go about now? Just like, do you have something on the wall that shows you who your avatar is? We So it's funny. When we did the avatar workshop, worksheet, we, we did. We have somebody's name on it. But that was, and it, um, it was good. 
better than nothing because then at least we have a, a you know an aim we're aiming towards something but it was before we had but but that avatar at the best was an a an hypothesis on um on my client's experience of working with you know working in the space for over 20 years but now that we have l- l- literal people that are not made up that are real that uh are, have been on her list um, some of them, and then obviously the deeper uh, the deeper human researchers, the people that bought into the into the the program, and and uh, getting more deep with them and understanding their why, because essentially um, at some point you could correlate the people who wrote the whys that purchased this program and look at just like you know your for your hottest audience, kind of like running a lookalike audience is on steroids, right? Because you have yeah. like uh, socio like like real. Um, Psych- psychological things, not just like, oh, they're, from, they're all from like Detroit or Michigan. They're oh, all from California. Totally. They're all 50 years totally. old. So, um, but um, um, we have not gone back. I mean, this is hot off the presses. So now it's going to be great actually going through this and then recreating it based on on actual like reality, not just yes. hypothesis. Yeah. Um, Where is all this data? Is it, I see it printed out, but do you have it on the computer? It is right now. It's 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 on a, a simple Word doc. I asked my client to just copy and paste every email she got and put on a Word doc. Um, I could totally help you with this, by the way. Later, we'll talk about that yeah. later. But let me ask you a question. I think some like I think this is important um, that people would think about when you ask them the why. Was there anything from you incentivizing them to get to answer it, or you simply just asked them why and they gave you their deepest thoughts? Let me look that up for you, my friend. Because that's important, right? Like you, some people, they just want to talk about their situation. And I can see that happening when they're in a community, right? In other ways, it's, you know, you could position it as, hey, uh, I want to serve you and I need to understand what you're going through for me to do that. So just what is your biggest challenge in X? Why do you want to go through this process? Like, what's the, what's the result you want to get, right? So. By understanding that, I can help you now with your problem, right? Yeah. So we, I love that. So we, we, we did it in reverse. Again, this was based off of a pressure launch. So our uh, hook was that she was doing some, um, you know, Facebook lives, some content leading up to this first email. And it was all about, you know, when to take your temperature, how to feel good during, you know, what to do. And so then the, this email then was framed, you know, for the last few weeks, if you've been watching, I've been, uh, we've been doing this, this, and this. It's like, um, so I, I've been sharing with you what, you know, the what, right. But um, I haven't, uh, I want to share, uh, but in order. I want to understand yeah. the why. So, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and now that we are, we're about to do an evergreen, we changed it a little bit. Um, to um, her story, but you know, so in 2020, uh, she closed her practice, her fertility yeah. practice, and decided to uh, um, the extra time, offended not seeing private clients, allowed me to feel a spark of possibility that despite the stay-at-home order, I could support even more women in becoming fearless in their fertility. Um, so she relates. She that. ultimately told her story to, so that she can show these people that she went through the same thing they're going through. She's relating to them. And now she's yes. explaining, this is what I figured out. Here's where I am today. And I yep. can help you. Right. And then it says, in order to feel, uh, in order to uh, have something to share with you, but in order to do it in a way that feels really aligned to me, I'd love to hear more about you. I can always share the what to do, when, and how to do it. But it's important for me to understand your why. What's your why? Um, and this is a delicate thing because it's so, so weird. Like, you know, we hear and, and I do have, I, I, it, it's a very delicate thing because in the entrepreneur realm, in the personal growth realm, it's like, what's your why? You know, like, but here it's like, it's like, what's your why? Like, what my fucking why? Like, I'm, you know, I've been, I've been you know, shooting my, my, my hormones up and the, my husband and I are fighting every night and sex is now like a chore. So it's, so it was a delicate thing. So we, we, we said, I know you want to have a baby and I think I understand why, but hearing in your words will be helpful for me to create. So it's, it's giving it, asking them, um, it's the why that keeps us going and keeps us returning to our purpose. Even when it feels like all the things aren't working, the why is what can help you trust that you can be fearless in your fertility. And, um, and, th- and that's it. I mean, yeah, and cool. we were overwhelmed. We did not really think that people would actually reply back. And then, no, oh boy, did they reply back? I mean, did you, so you so sent many... an email to this group, or yep, 
This was an so email. How did you get the people from the Facebook group to get on your email list? Um, this was from her email list. So, but when, when she was doing Facebook lives, she, or the call to action was to get on her email list, like a waiting list. Understood. Good. And which is yeah. smart. And I just want to hit on that for a moment because hit me, from, from a lead generation perspective, a lot of people think build up your Facebook group, build up all those things. And that's amazing. That's all great. But the number one goal that you should be focused on is using Facebook to, if you're creating groups to get them off of Facebook, because yeah. if Facebook shuts you down, of course, you're done. But what she did, yeah. which was really smart, is she brought them from Facebook onto her subscriber list so that she can now just send an email and ask them questions. And if Facebook shuts down that group, she still has that list. That's oh, yeah. it to your business. But if, uh, you know, the other thing you made me think about was, um, you know, when you have your why, I remember when I was at Funnel Hacking Live, we started getting deep about this stuff. And, and you'd ask yourself as an entrepreneur what your why is. And what I found was usually your why is answered in your fifth or sixth why like you know when you ask a child mm. oh for sure uh, your, yeah your, 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 your kid will say to you like um daddy how come this and i'm like bah, bah, bah. but why what? because of this bah, 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 bah. why and you keep asking why usually the first why like in entrepreneur world is not the right answer and then mm. you ask it why well why are you in business because i want to make money no but why do you want to make why money? Why do you want to make money? Yeah, right. for sure. Because I want to have a good life for my family. Why do you want to have a good life for your family? Because when I grew up, I didn't have this and I want it for my kids. You know what I mean? So it's like you really get down to the core, which people don't, and like, they're like, oh my God, no, it's just, there's this self-awareness of like, oh, okay. So that's the, the all right, I want love or, or I want people to respect me. You know, like it's, it's really an interesting thing if you play that exercise out. But um, that's cool, man. So I love it. It sounds like you, uh, you really got, something going. So uh, I'm excited to see what happens. And I'm happy to help you if you want to, you want to brainstorm about how to take it to the next level where you create your segments. And then I'll show you a way that you do it with my, what I call my perfect survey method, perfect survey. <laughs> how we can create that uh, for you. I, we could test this. It'd be fun. I'll do that for you. Um, yes. Man. Um, so yeah, the answer is yes. Anything to, to do. I mean, we, and we have traction now and we do have we, we are using surveys um, to, for like a, a self-diagnosis, but we're not leveraging it in a way then to go just by maybe asking one or two extra questions in that survey. Well, so um, no, the whole so. idea now is, right, so the, you use the first part of the survey for research, right? What, what I'm focusing on and, and what my world is about, like Survey Detective, is using surveys to generate new leads, so this mm -hmm. is where you now create a survey to go out to the market. You use the first survey to go to the people you know, right? The whole idea is now that's powerful and you're going to speak to people that don't know anything about you. So this is a way you can use a survey, a quiz, an assessment to generate a cold lead, cast a yeah. wide web, you generate high quality leads. And then through that process, they're going to start to be nurtured. And then you're going to convert those people into customers. It's, it's very, very powerful. I'm telling you, though, it's let, we'll let's do like it, man. Start to your, uh, to your <laughs> let's do it. Let's get more. Listen, man, I'm finally following my dream to getting more <laughs> women pregnant. Oh my goodness! <laughs> in, the and best, and in the most ethical, like 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 karma amazing way. Like what I, I could. It, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but so does Mr. Golden Showers until you realize it's endearing. And uh, and at the end of the day, like I feel like I am really doing some good in this world. I, we didn't even mention this person has a over a 75, 76 percent success rate, right. which is like still, unheard yeah. of. And so it, it, it's always day, nice to be right to be working for people that actually are getting results and getting 100%. them results. Yeah. Right. But you're not only getting people pregnant, you're getting them to the finish line where they're actually that's having the That's my friend. Yes. Right. That's and right. That's, and that's got to be, you know, something where you're able to now take a, a person who's struggling. And that's, a we've all been through this, right? In some yeah. shape or form when our wives are pregnant and we're scared yep. and like, you know, I, I totally empathize with that. But what you're doing is, I mean, how impactful for you to not only get them pregnant, but they're freaking out throughout the whole pregnancy because of all the things that have happened yes. in the past that yep. when they actually have that baby, it's like the miracle yep. of miracles and you're, you're helping in that. And that's, that's powerful. That's really awesome. And the beautiful thing is you can do it and you can also earn a very nice living. Doing yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, right? it's, it's pretty awesome. That's awesome um, all right, my friend. Dude, You're I love you. Let's let's book another time, another call to actually go into that a bit deeper and just yeah. catch up in life. Okay. Yeah. I gotta I'll say I'll send you something you could fill out to give me like a higher level. And then maybe I could cool. just do some of the stuff for you and then 
kind of just put it in your lap to take home. So, yeah, I want to hear more about um, another t- if what if you have been working to the Martinos. I think that space is similar, obviously different, but similar in terms of relationship and service serving women. Sure. And they, like that. they work. It works for any business, yeah. any business that needs leads. It's going to work for it. It's not about them. It's about just if you're selling something, you need leads. We could do yeah. it for you. All Sweet. right. All, All right, buddy. buddy. Good have a great day, man. Good to see you. you too. Love you, kid. Bye-bye. Love you, man.